Hello, peanut peeps. It's Peanut Chew, Peanut Chew Adventures. What am I doing today? I want to test out the 100 to 400 lens. So far, I've been using it and uh, I'm having a lot of fun. What I want to test with the lens is actually, well, I should say today, it's not about birds. It's about bees. Because Nikon says this lens, the 100 to 400, is macro style focusing. So I want to test it out. It can focus minimally to 3.22 feet. So I have to be 3.22 feet away from the subject. And I think if I'm about that range or maybe a few feet further and I'm extended out to 400, I probably could fill the frame pretty decently with a B. And I'm going to test that out. I also want to test out how fast the autofocus work, is working, if it's locking on, and of course, the picture quality. So I'm here in the refuge and I'm in nowhere fancy. I'm in the parking lot because that's where the bees are. So I'm gonna be doing that right now and let's go. I found out one thing, the minimum focus distance is at 3.22 feet for such a small subject like the bee, you got to be close to that or just a little more in order to fill the frame. If you go any further, it's going to be too small. The picture side, I know you could crop a little, but still you have to be pretty close. Now, a wish list for me with this lens would be a smaller minimum focus that's maybe two feet. That would be excellent. So overall, I was happy with it. So I just found out. These are carpenter bees. I didn't know what they were when I was taking the videos. And I'm not a bee expert, but I was told it's a carpenter bee. So, Ralph, thank you so much for that info. Oh no, I can't get a grip. Let me grab my bottom. I'm falling, I'm falling. What's wrong with me? I can fly. Under picture shooting, I've set the camera to use AFC using wide L and animal subject detection. I am also using auto ISO and exposure compensation when needed. I wanted to make sure my shutter was fast enough to keep the picture sharp while trying to keep the ISO low as possible. It all depended on the amount of light I had at the time. For the Bees in Flight 1600 shutter speed, would be my minimum and at this speed I was expecting to have a large wing blur since they were moving so rapidly. I did raise the shutter when I had more light. I was extremely happy with the results. I found the pictures to be extremely sharp and at ISO 2200 noise was very low using the Z9. So I'm trying to get the eye level where the bees are and I broke out the chair to get nice and low because they're going around this level. So far it's been working pretty well and what I'm doing is I'm extended all the way out to 400 and when they come in my region, well, the first thing I should say is that I'm using the wide L animal detection and when the bee goes in that box. I'm, tr I'm trying to focus and lock on there. And with the cluttered background, sometimes it is locking, sometimes I'm having some trouble. But what I've been doing, and it's been working well, is when I see the subject and if I don't get a lock, what I'll do is I will manual focus until I see the focus peaking on the B. Once I see that, I hit the rear focus button and that's been working well where as soon as I hit that I see a lock on and it will stick to them for a while. Only the female carpenter bee can sting and they are not aggressive. Usually they stay close to the nest however they will sting if they're threatened or provoked. They can also survive for up to three years. They produce 
one or two generations each year. The mother and her newly hatched daughters often live in the same nest together. Here I'm using the 1 4 teleconverter and it's still very sharp and it helps fill the frame even more. Another bonus with this lens is that it's only a little over three pounds. I'm always on a tripod because it helps me stabilize the video, but I still have to carry it to the location. So the reduced weight definitely helps. And it's balanced so when you extend from 100 to 400, there's no balance change. So when you are on a tripod, it does not fall forward. So what did I think about the lens? After using it, I really loved it. The first thing I really loved was the sharpness. The sharpness was outstanding, both for video and photos. Extended out of 400, and when I looked at the video, to me, it looked great. So the number one thing, sharpness, thumbs up. So before I talk about autofocus and autofocus speed, I wanna just say, I'm talking about it with macro style focusing and what my experience is here with the bees, not with birds, because I'm going to do a video of that later down the road and how the autofocus works with birds. So what I think about autofocus and autofocus speed, when the bee was not in a cluttered background and it was away from the, away from the background, it worked well. The autofocus locked on and it stayed on the bee. Now when the bee moved erratically, it did come off, but it worked well. Now, the autofocus when it was a cluttered background, when the bee was flying within the green, there I struggled sometimes getting a focus lock. So what I did was manual focused it until I saw the red focus peaking and then I quickly pressed and released the focus button and then it did attach where it locked on and would stick pretty well and at times it would come off and I would repeat that over and over but I was just happy that at such close range and such a small subject the bee that the focus did work and overall I was happy. My wish list is that Maybe the minimum focus distance could be a little closer. And because at times I was riding that 3.22 where sometimes it wouldn't focus. But overall, happy. This is my first time doing anything so close and macro style. And I you know this lens is, uh, they don't consider it a true macro lens, I don't think. I, it's more like a hybrid, but it works. And it really piqued my interest in macro and what lies in here. Because when I was looking at the bees, ooh, I also saw slugs and other insects. And I, this really piqued my interest where I think my next lens is gonna be the, uh, the 105 macro lens, just because that was so, it was really interesting. So I had a great time with it. So thank you for watching. And please hit subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Peanut Chew Adventures.